All right. Hello. Hello. I'm here with my friend, Cindy Collins today. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you so much for, for doing this. I can't wait to, to talk to you today and just have all the people listening. Just You're just going to pour into them because you're just so fabulous and you're fun and you're amazing. And I was like, I have to read your bio because it just cracks me up. And I just, I love it because I love you. So here we go. Are you ready, Cindy, for your own bio? I am. Yes. Yes. Tell me what it said. (laughs) Yeah. You're like, what did I say? Cindy is a radical dreamer and a coffee enthusiast. She is originally from San Francisco Bay area and resides in Delaware with her husband, three boys and a pit bull, which we have a story about that she is obsessed with. She is a veteran, a former professional chef, a birth doula, and she is an herbal entrepreneur. So welcome girl. Thanks so much for having me. (laughs) I love that because I think, first of all, were you always a radical dreamer? Like Mm -hmm. ever since you were a little girl, were you always that way? Um, yeah, the radical dreamer, like you, I'm going to go do something and change the world. That's always been kind of innate within me. When I was a young teenager, I had dreams of becoming a missionary actually. And I wanted to become a missionary. Um, instead then I was going to go in the peace corps and my dad was like, no, 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 you'll make no money in the peace corps. Go in the military. We'll still find out. You still make no money when you're enlisted in the military. You're still poor. By yeah. The way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I've always had that. I'm going to I'm going to do something, right? I'm going to dream really big. What's the possibilities? You know, what what is adventure waits, you know? No, I love it because that has to come from somewhere. And so I feel like it obviously must have maybe been innate in you from a little girl, but then to be able to do all those different professions, because you're not at the age where you're retirement age, right? You're still super young, but to be a professional chef, you were in the you're a veteran to be a doula. Now you have a super successful business. Like how do you do that from jumping from one thing to the next and feel confident in whatever you're going to be doing? You know what I mean? Right. I know. Yeah. And people, you know, will mention about that, about my, about my confidence that I have. And I'm just like, you know, I guess I'm, I'm not afraid of failing. I'm more afraid of not trying. Right. That's much more because I'm, you know, I'm always interested to see what is my potential and my capacity and what are the things I've still not learned and discovered about myself yet. And so for me, trying these different things is just another opportunity to get to know myself better and to discover what I'm capable of or what I'm not capable of, you know, and so it's just a learning process about myself. Yeah. Well, I would love to kind of figure out like, what is the timeline there? Like, take us like back a little bit. Like, where did it kind of all start? Like, bef- was it before you had kids, like during kids after like kind of a little mix of, of all of it? Like, tell us a little bit about your journey and your yeah. story. Yeah. And so I've, it's mostly been over the past, I guess, 20 years and I'm only in my early, I'll be 42 in May. So I'm still pretty young, yes. you know, to have had all those different experiences, you know? And so when I joined the military, it was 98, it was right after I got out of high school. And then right after that, I went straight to culinary college. Um, and I worked in the restaurant industry for a couple of years. And that was, my goal was really to become, um, I wanted to um, open a coffee house and a bakery. And I really wanted to do that because I loved baked goods. And, um, and I used to work in coffee shops thank God I didn't do that. I'm just saying the (laughs) restaurant industry is so hard. You know that, you know, it is really, really hard to be a part of the restaurant industry. Um, And it was during, it was not too long after that, that I started working in lactation at local hospitals doing peer support. So I did that from 2000, um, 2006 to, I think about 2009, I did that. And um, shortly after that, that's when I started to be, I trained to become a birth doula. Um, and I did that from 2009 until 2000, I think 2012, I did, um, you know, and so that was, I was a birth doula at one point I was the president of the Delaware birth network. Right. And I tried tried to start, I tried to start a doula support network. I could not get that off the ground. That was not going to happen. I really gave it a go and I really struggled to, to do things in Delaware for the birth community, you know, for um, parents and professionals. And I just really struggled at it. It was, it was really hard. Um, You know, but meanwhile, I was being their birth doula. I was doing that. I still had two other businesses, you know, I was like, I was just chasing my curiosity. That's what I was doing. What was I curious about? And I would just kind of experiment with that. And so I was also a photographer. I did birth photography. I did maternity photography and newborn photography. Um, and I also, then I started creating these herbal products and it was, that was just a hobby. It was like, I love to make and create. 
right? Yeah. And so for me, it was just like, I want to make a salve that's safe for my baby and that's all safe for cloth diapers. And so it was just creating things for myself and for personal use. And that was my doula clients because I was still a doula at the time. And so I tried to do these three businesses at all at one time, you know, um, and then I realized it's really hard to run three businesses with three little boys being a stay-at-home mom. Really hard to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I, I tried to pursue all those things for a very long time, but it wasn't really until 2015 that I really s- focused and said, you know what, I've got to make a decision. Um, you know, I got to let go of one thing first, you know, and see if that makes things feel easier. Cause it was, you know, it's really hard being a parent of young kids, but also trying to own multiple businesses and pursue them all equally the same, um, vigor. It's almost impossible to do that. You know, I didn't have a a nanny or a support team or a maid or a chef, none of that stuff. Um, you know, not most people do. Um, so I stopped being a photographer for a while and I said, you know, I'm just not going to do this anymore. You know, I'm just gonna, I don't love it enough to chase after it. Yeah. So I had to let that go. Um, you know, and I still love being a part of the birth community and being a doula and supportive and supportive of midwives and encouraging people to use those services as well. Um, but I realized when I was doing that, cause I, you know, that I could still run this herbal business and have an impact in the, um, in that community, the birth community in a different way, you know, where I didn't have to be a doula attending births to make an impact. I didn't have to, I wanted to be a midwife. I didn't have to be a midwife catching babies to make a difference. Whereas I could start this business and then encourage other people in those industries and start a midwifery scholarship program where that would have a greater impact, you know, helping other people in their midwifery education through, you know, um, um, through social giving through my business than I could ever have as an individual. And for me, that was the most important thing. How could it have the greatest impact? Period. Yeah. And I love, you said that you stayed at home, but I'm like, but wait, you were not I, using, you were at home, but you were like busy working. Right. Yeah. I was a stay at home mom for 10 years. Yeah. I do that myself because I was a teacher and then I stayed at home, but I always say I worked from home. Cause I'm yeah. like, I, there never was a time when I wasn't working from home doing some type yeah. of business or involved in something. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I wanted to catch that because I'm like, wait, girl, you were, you were doing all the things you wore all the hats and you had three jobs and you had three kids. I feel like there's like a, something with a number three for you because yeah. like, did some of your careers last for like three years? I swear you were like, oh, it was this year to this year. And I'm like, Something's up with yeah, her three, couple, like the- three, three to three to like between between like three and five years, something like yeah. And I can't when I was in the restaurant industry, it was from two thousand. Um, I mean, I started before I got out because I was a barista before I got out of the military. But that wow. was like when I went to culinary college, and uh, that was two thousand um, three, two thousand three, two thousand four until about um, two thousand. I think six, I guess it was because I taught, I did the restaurant industry and I taught baking courses at Polytech. So I taught baking courses as well. Like I did a couple of night classes, like, yeah, I'll teach a baking course. Yeah. I'll teach how to make bread or whatever it was, you know, cause it was fun, you know, and I was able to get out of the house and make a little bit of money. So when did you start having kids then at that point? Like what, at what point did you like have your first, you know, child? In 2005. Your- yeah. 2005 was my first one was born and 2006, sorry, 2011 was my last one was born. Okay. And yeah. what were you, so that's when you were a doula and a photographer and you started your herbal business and, and then, and right. more like cooking classes, like all the things. Right. Right. I just went from all the different things, tried all the different things. It was like, you know, t- I was, you know, working in the restaurant industry, teaching baking courses, and then I did lactation. So I did a little bit of that. I think I taught a couple baking courses, even while I was working in lactation at local hospitals. Um, and then I stopped teaching baking courses, still did lactation and then became a doula and then eventually stopped doing, um, lactation at hospitals. But I did that for a couple of years. Do you remember like back in, in, when you were doing like all those things and you had your three kids like at home and you were doing all these things and, and also your wife, you know, uh, that's also part of who you are. Yeah. Um, did you go through times when you were like, I can't do all these different things? Like, did you go through different emotions and different feelings of like, I have to give something up. I can't do all these things. Like I need to ask for help. Like I can't do it all. Did you go through things like that? Is that when you started to kind of put things aside? Yeah. And that's when I started to reassess when I wanted 
you know, you have those aspirations to, to do, to do things, to create. Um, and sometimes those aspirations are so much bigger than your capabilities, you know, at that given time. And so that's when I just really had to reassess, um, what are my limitations and just be honest with myself, you know, like, okay, I, I, you know, you can't do everything and you can't do everything well, you know, you can, you can do anything, but you cannot do everything. And so it was really just a process of me saying no to myself. So, you know what, I know I love photography. Um, and I, and I felt like I could be really good at it if I gave it my all, but I was like, I don't want to give it my all because I want to do these other things, you know? And so saying it's, it's okay just, it's okay to start something and not finish it. You know, and I think that's one thing we have to give ourselves that permission, but we also need to allow ourselves that opportunity to chase our curiosity. And in that process, chasing our curiosity, seeing what we like and what we love and what we're good at, we're not good at and saying, you know what, that just thing wasn't for me, but now, you know, right. Then we're not knowing that was not for you. You know, so I chased all my curiosity. Um, sorry. (laughs) Somebody's waving to me by my store. Sorry. Future customer. (laughs) Like, what is this place? Best friends. (laughs) Um, So, you know, it was just chasing my curiosity and, and, um, you know, and knowing that I had to say no to myself. Um, And so I still love that. And now that I love, you know, I'm in this place now where I can employ a brand photographer because I can't be that brand photographer anymore. I can't, I don't, so I can just be like, Hey, you know what I, and I know how to, because I was a photographer, I know how to identify a good photographer to hire. So that's definitely, that's helped me having that previous experience um, and knowing what the expectations in the industry is like um, yeah. you know, when I'm hiring somebody. Yeah. I think this will be really interesting too, because um, I would love to talk about your business and what you have been doing with it, because I think, um, so many times we can limit ourselves as mom and sometimes as women and mm-hmm. what you have done with your business that you had already said, like you just started from home. Like it was just like a hobby, but mm-hmm. what you have made it into, because I think there's so many like kick-ass moms that are mm-hmm. listening and are like, but how do I do that? Or how do I put like, do I put the mom aside or do I put myself aside or how do I create this business that I want to create mm-hmm. and still be able to do all the things? Like, can you just yeah. kind of feed into like, Cause you're, I would love for you to talk about your business and what you've yeah. done because it's so incredible. And I'm just, I love it. I love that we're friends. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I, when I started my business, it was just a hobby again to create products for myself. You know, I never imagined that I would be in the place where I have over 40,000 customers. I've shipped to every single state and I've shipped to 59 countries and I've grown a team. I've never imagined it was come from my warehouse and a couple hundred square feet and to a garage that I converted into a, a studio, you know, where I used to do newborn photography and I used to do the herbal making, I used to do all the things out of there. That was just my creator space, um, you know, and I would have never imagined that I'd open a retail store. I've never even managed a retail store. I was never a manager of a retail store, but now I own one and I'm planning to open a second one. Like what? You know, so it was something I never imagined, but um, for me, it was just starting small and just building upon that and slowly building upon that and taking those daily courageous steps. And I think that's what it's really about is sometimes it's so hard to see about that big picture where we're going to go. And sometimes they, I really believe ignorance is bliss. And I am so thankful for that because if I had known, I really am. If I had known where I'd be now, I'd be like, no, thanks. No, yeah. that's way too scary. That is way too big. I, just, I can't do that. I don't have those things, but it was small steps at a time, um, making those decisions and stepping out in faith and believing that, you know what? I think I can do this. I'm going to try and see if I'm able to do these things, you know? So that's, you know, that, so that goes from creating products to teaching asking for help, right. And being vulnerable and saying, I need to ask people to help me because I can only do so much. So that goes from hiring people, you know, and I've never done that. I've never managed or oversaw people before and was a a leader in any capacity prior to owning my own business. So I never even saw myself as a leader, even having been in the military, I never saw that I had leadership possibilities or capabilities. That was something I never saw within myself, but that cultivated that, you know, it really was a, it's been a transformational experience for me being a business owner and the person that it's created me to become and, and that I'm still becoming in the process. Um, you know, so it was just, you know, knowing that, yes, I am a mom, I am a wife, but I'm so much more than that. My identity is so much more vast than that. And it's, um, complex, you know, and knowing that, um, it doesn't just, my identity does not reside in a single person, you know, 
it's, I define it. Yeah. It's up to me to define what my identity is. Yeah. I love that. And I also love how you said you did, like, if you had seen where you were now, you probably would be like, yeah, no, because you were in such a different space and you have grown so much as a human being like, mm-hmm. wait, I don't have all those skills. I don't know all those tools. I don't know how to do these. I don't know the marketing. I don't know the branding. I don't know the leadership. I don't know how to hire. I don't know how to open a new store. I don't know how to do the insurance. Like there's so much limiting belief that we can put on ourselves before we've even done something. So I love that tip of just like start small, do something courageous like every day, because I think we can talk ourselves out of it before we've even started. 100%, 100%. So last year I finally started getting on TikTok, right? I don't like the camera. I'm not, I'm not the person I don't want to speak to people. Right. Um, And, but I was like, you know what? It's okay. Like, you know what? I might fail at it, but I've got to try because it can have a I, it's going to help my business, right? It's going to help my business grow, but I also might be able to help people, right? And so I can share things about my business process and development and how I've grown, um, you know, but that's, I'm not the person that wants to go speak in front of people and be on camera. That's not me, but that's what you have to do on TikTok. So I have to be courageous and be, you know, confront that fear and kind of get over that. Yeah. For the greater good. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going on TikTok? Oh, um, it's going Great. I think it is. I think it's going great. I'm having fun, right? Good. I'm having, I'm having fun with it and I'm trying to, you know, share about my business and what I do and help people, you know, and, and to me, that's important. That's the whole process about my business, right? Is always having helped people, you know, and that's why I started the business. And that's why I opened the, the herbal apothecary was to help more people, you know, and that's why I decided to open a second store was to help more people. And that's why I decided to go through this process of franchise development for my herbal apothecary, which I said in 2018, when somebody asked me, they said, would you ever franchise? And I said, hell no. I mean, I remember, I remember that conversation very clearly. I was like, no way would I ever do that. And then here I am in that after doing some, um, you know, some soul searching and listening to the need that was available there and how I could help other people own a business like mine. And I could be their cheerleader. And I thought, why would I not do that? I, I love to be able to help people and support them. Yeah. So how, how, what has been like the hardest thing would you say about where you are right now and like all the different identities and hats and stuff that you wear, what do you think is like the hardest thing like right now in this moment, like for you? So, um, I think being an entrepreneur, right. We have a tendency to chase shiny objects. And so no, just to being aware of that and, and saying no to chasing every shiny object and opportunity, Um, I think that's the hardest thing and making good decisions. I think that's a really hard thing is making good decisions. Um, And so how do you do that? Right. How do you make good decisions? Answer. (laughs) I know. Right. Well, I make decisions. That's really going to help your business grow. Like specifically those things, because there's so many things you can try that are going to help your business grow and market, but you, you can't do it all. So it's, you know, you have to really experiment. Um, You know, so I think that's been the hardest thing is, is trying different things for business growth and brand and awareness because, you know, my business spans across e-commerce and retail and manufacturing and shipping, you know, and so there's, there's a lot of opportunity there for growth and change and challenges. There really are. So, um, I think that's the hardest thing is because I span so many different areas is focusing on them. But also I think one of the the most important thing we can do as business owners as we're growing is making sure that we're growing our team that grows with us, you know, because again, you're only one person, you can only do so much. So that, you know, that means growing a team, hiring people, delegating things to people and letting go. Um, You know, I can do a lot of things well, but if I'm trying to do 20 different things, I'm not gonna do them all so well. And that's the truth of it, you know, so, having to make sure that I can delegate things. I can teach people how to do it and let it go and let them run with that thing and empower them in that process. And they may may not do it exactly the way that I do it and being okay with that. What was the first, do you remember like, what was the first like thing that you delegated or like your first employee? Because I absolutely, (laughs) I know like myself, I'm like, I hate delegating. Like, I don't know why I'm just like, oh, I can just do it all. Like that mentality. Oh, I can do it all. I can do this. I can do that. I can create this. I can create that. And it's also trusting other people. Right. Um, so what, what would you say? Like, what, go ahead and answer that. Oh, God bless this girl that worked for me. God bless 
her and she still speaks to me. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. it, was, it was in, it was in my home. And when I used to buy the herbs and I think I had her because I was so started so small, I wouldn't even buy herbs and powders when I was making lactation capsules because it cost more money. And I didn't understand the difference between time and value and money. I didn't get that concept at all. And I was like, but I might save a dollar. I mean, I was literally that, that place. Yeah. Um, so whereas when I would probably have her grind herbs um, into powders and fill capsules and help ship with orders. And she was just a high school kid that would come in a couple hours a week. And that was it. And I just, you know, paid her what I paid her under the table because I wasn't running payroll. I didn't pay myself for about five years until after I started my business. I didn't because I put everything back into the business and paying whatever help I could afford that I needed at that time in any capacity. Um, so yeah, so that was my first, my first hire. Um, and I, you know, I've learned so much more about hiring people in that process since then. Um, cause it is such a scary thing to do that, to bring people into this thing that you're creating and to trust them and to be vulnerable with them and to be, you're going to be messy in that process and make mistakes. Um, and, and that's okay. I think it's, I think it's, it's totally okay. Um, you know, so I'm much more refined now in my hiring, onboarding and delegating process and training process, because I have a team of people, right. That help me because I'm not the only one that does everything anymore. You know, where I'm not the one where I have to make the product and ship and work at the store. I get to do all the other unfun, unfun things like meet insurance inspectors. So <laughs> that's my job now. <laughs> so. But I also get to do podcasts with you, you know, so that's, that's, that's the balance of today. But it's so interesting because it's it, like, I'm thinking all the different things that all the different hats that you're wearing as you're, you're the business owner, but like all the different things that you're doing. And like, even to think of manufacturing, I'm like, how do you even like, how do you even figure that out? Like, how do you even find a place or how do you even know, like, what kind of machines do you, I'm like, that is so mind blowing to me where I could see where you would have been like, if, if you had thought of yourself how many years now? Like 10, eight years ago, 10 years since 2010, I started. Yeah. So 10 years ago, you know, 2010. So 12 12 years ago, like if you're like, Oh, I would have to do manufacturing. I would do like, no way, because that seems so scary to me to be like, I I, I don't even know what to do. Like, I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to get the wrong ingredient or they're going to do something wrong. And then I'm going to make people sick or I don't know. Like that just seems so foreign to me. It, how did it, you it, figure that out? How did you, yeah. like, I know it's, you have to start small, but like, how did you even start? Because I think so many people won't even start. So I think the thing is that whatever you're doing, if you can document your process and know that you're going to have to teach to somebody at some day, that's it. Don't make it any more complicated that document your process. I don't care if it's in a notebook that you get somewhere, what you're doing, whatever it is, whether it's a service or whether it's a product you're manufacturing, And that way you can teach it to somebody else who created a system. As long as you have a system in place, you can scale, you know, and now there's different levels of scale, you know, and, um, you know, so what things look like at scale. So whether you're making, I don't know, like we make things throughout the week. So, you know, so maybe we're making several batches of salves and teas and lactation supplements or something like that. What does that look like at scale? But also at some point, can you scale this within your capacity? There are some things that you have to outsource that you cannot scale. And so you have to realize what is the point that you have to outsource. So like when we have our lactation capsules, those were things that I could not scale within my warehouse and my manufacturing area because that requires certain machines that I cannot afford. That requires, <laughs> that requires a lot of ventilation. We're talking like a $200,000 machine. I don't have a place for that. Yeah. Where do, what? Is, what? I, don't, I don't know. So, you know, at a point when I was making all my capsules by hand, and it was becoming really painful. And I learned that you have to hire or outsource um, at your pain point, right? So it's like, what is causing you the most pain and frustration? Outsource or hire there. Um, and so for when I, I have a contract manufacturer and so that makes my lactation capsules. And I didn't even know, cause I don't know anything about manufacturing but I just know I went to a natural products expo and tried to feel like who are contract manufacturers and dear God, please, nobody asked me any questions about my business cause I'm terrified, right? And that was me, I was absolutely terrified um, you know, to talk to people about business cause I knew I was probably making all kinds of mistakes and not doing things wrong and not following FDA guidelines. And 
what I, I don't know what I didn't know, you know, just because that's that ignorance is bliss part. Um, but, you know, being open where you're trying to trust people, it's just a little bit of information and maybe they'll hopefully help you and take pity upon you. Like, oh, you know what? She seems really hungry and she's got something good going for her. I'm going to help her, you know, because at that point when I was telling, uh, I think the first contract manufacturer about it, and I was like, yeah, we've shipped to like, I think it was like 30 countries at that time or something like that. And they're like, wait, you're doing this all out of your home. I'm like, yes, please don't tell on me. Like, you know, what do you say? I don't know, you know, and they're like, we can help you, you know, so they, you know, you have to kind of take that step of faith that you do, you know, but now I'm on my second contract manufacturer because I realized I couldn't even scale when I was my first one. He was great to start with. I learned a lot of things through that, that contract manufacturing um, small business, but I learned that I couldn't scale with his company yeah. where I needed to go because it was still, I was still ordering all of the herbs from all the distributors and I'm sourcing 5,600 pounds of herbs and organizing deliveries and supply chains and manufacturing. They're just making the capsules for me, but I still did so much of that work. And that's when I realized I'm like, this has got to change because if I'm going to grow, I can't grow where I'm at right now. And um, so that's when I realized I had to find another contract manufacturer and let go of that. Of course you pay an additional premium fee for that. But I was like, but that's my time. Yeah. My time is so valuable and they can help me scale. And I, now I can use my time to do other things, to grow my business, to grow my team that only I can do. Yeah. And so those early days where, you know, you said you didn't pay yourself for like five years and you're putting everything back into the business and, you know, all the other different odds and ends and, and things that you were doing, obviously you must have a really good support system because not everybody can go and do that. So let's right. talk a little bit about that. Cause you know, did you have family, obviously your husband, how did that work out? Because like maybe a lot of moms are like, well, I don't have, I don't have that support. How can I do that? Oh, so had my husband, um, all my family lives on, I live on the East coast and all my family's on the West coast. So I didn't have a lot of family support. Um, you know, I really do wish I had a lot more family support. I didn't, it was really, I relied a lot on my, on my husband. Um, I didn't have anybody watching my kids while I was trying to build my business. I did it between nap time or late at night or when I could sneak in an hour when they might be busy watching you Gabba Gabba, whatever it was. <laughs> Did you sleep? Like, did you ever sleep? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, I don't need, I need like six hours of sleep. I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, you know, I still get the same amount of sleep, you know, as I did, as I did then, um, you know, but this, you know, it, I just, I fit it in when I could, you know? And so I slowly built in, of course, as my last child finally went to school all day, then I had more time available, more time to devote to it, you know, as they got older and they actually napped and went to school and things like that. Um, you know, so it's really hard if you can, you know, find a support system. So whether that's a friend, a cousin, if you're a single parent, you know, if you have, if you have parents that help you, oh my gosh, that's, that's great. That's, that's gold, you know, that can help you with your business process. You know, they're just there to be a support system. Maybe they're watching your kids for two hours so you can do whatever you're doing. You know, you don't have to have a full day of eight hours. You just need to be able to sneak in, you know, a couple hours here and there. Right. Think, it's working in the pockets of your time of when you can do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And over time, that's going to build momentum, right? We don't think this 30 minutes or this hour or this two hour block that we have to work on our business or whatever it is that we're building is going to make a difference, but over time it's going to snowball and it's going to compound and that's going to grow. Mm -hmm. You seem like you don't do, I don't want to be like, I don't want to assume, but like that you like do things the way you want. You trust in yourself that you're going to try this. You trust the little nudges that are kind of coming into your body. And I think sometimes we as women and maybe just everyone in general can want to listen to what everybody else is telling us to do. So like, this is the way you have to build a business. This is the way you have to be on social media. This is the way you have to be in hiring. This is the way you have to be as a mom. Do you feel like you kind of butt up against that system and you kind of do, because you don't know, and ignorance is on fire. Like you just kind of right. do things that feel good to you, yeah. um, you know, in your business. And that's, you know, as a parent or as a mom, if you want to do something, you also have to listen to your intuition mm -hmm. and not necessarily what everybody else is telling you. Like this is the only way you can build a business is if you're working 10 hours a day straight, mm -hmm. like ignoring your children. And you're like, no, you can you can work it so it works for you and your family. Yeah, what 100 percent Um, if somebody tells me I have to do something, I'm probably gonna do the opposite. I do not like to be told what to do at all, which is why I only did four years in the military. And thank God I did get discharged honorably. Um, you know, almost not so, but you know, I, you know, I just, 
I don't like to be told what to do or how I have to do it. You know, I want to do it on my own terms and my own way what works best for me and my lifestyle and my family and my sanity. Um, and it just makes sense. You know, I want to build a business and build a team that I'm proud of and that people are proud to be a part of, um, you know, so that means I let everybody that works for me pretty much make their own schedule. Wow. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't create schedules anymore. Like, and so they are in charge of scheduling. I don't do it. And they, and we make schedules a month or two out because that makes sense for our lives. Yes. And so it's okay, I need this day off and that's fine. That's fine. Can you get your work done and get some new cover your shift? It, it's that should, that's the really the, my people that work for me and the team that I've created are the least of my worries. They really are, um, you know, and I think I'm just really fussed in that way. Um, but that's not how you've been told how you have to have a team. Right. Would you have to do this way? You have to be micromanaged. You have to be on top of people. You've got to have your thumb on them in this time. Um, and I don't like that. I want to trust my people and empower them and give them autonomy to make decisions, whether they're good or bad and own those decisions and live okay. into a walk through it because that's how they're going to learn. So sometimes not everybody makes the best decisions. I still don't, I don't always make the best decisions, you know, and, um, and that's how we learn and that's how we grow. Um, so I'm okay if I do things a little bit unconventional and I know I've not, I could have grown my business way faster. You know, I've had, op I've had opportunities for people who wanted to invest into my business or buy my business or bring it to market into big box distributors a lot faster. But I said, no, I'm not ready. And I, and they, you know, I had one time at a company approach me and they wanted to put me in these big trade shows. And they're like, we don't have a brand like you in our portfolio. Like you are so right. And I was like, you know what? I might be right for you, but you're not right for me. Yeah. And they couldn't take that rejection. They couldn't believe it. They're like, what? And I was like, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm not ready for the thing that you're trying to present to me. And I'm very aware of that. Cause if I, if, when I am ready, if I do it now and I blow that opportunity, I'm done until a new buyer becomes in that position, which could be five or 10 years. Um, and I don't want to grow so fast that it's not sustainable. And it, and it creates a life of insanity for me and chaos. Life yeah. is already crazy. Anyways, I've got three boys. I don't need more chaos, you know, that I can manage, um, you know, so I'm just going to kind of grow on my own terms a little bit slower, but I'm okay. It's, it's, it's smart, scalable growth. That makes sense. Oh my goodness. So are you like that in your home too, with your boys? Like, are they kind of, they can like be whoever they want to be like, okay, you like, okay. You like baseball. You like to go ride horses. You like to be an artist. Like they can kind of not do what they want and run right. the show, but like They're they own individuals. Have... Yes. Yes. Even as much as it drives me crazy. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. Yes. There's things that they do. And I'm just like, how did I birth this human being? Like, I don't even know where they came from. Like, that's okay. That's them, you know? And so I'm not trying to force them to become, you know, their, their own, uh, uh, another version of myself or who I think it should be, or this ideal. I want them to be their own selves and whatever that means to them. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm not forcing them into any sports or hobbies or whatever, you know, they're not interested in that. I'm like, okay, that's all right. Cause I would never want to be forced into that. Do they create stuff? Are they creators? Yeah. Yeah. They're creators. Yeah. They're creators in their own way, you know, Legos and music and things like that. They, they do their own thing. Um, you know, they're not, they're not as motivated as I was when I was younger, but that's okay. Right. You know, I'm just praying that comes later at some point, <laughs> the motivation. <Yeah. laughs> so they're still young. There's plenty of time, you know, so much time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Boys I, are, whew, boys are full of energy. That's for sure. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They, they are. So, um, yeah, so I'm very much that way in my house where I, I do like to create autonomy. Um, I do, I do like, um, I do like order, you know, as well, but I like to create systems and order within my business because that I can control. And I say that loosely enforce, I don't like the word control, um, that I can force systems within my business at home. It is way harder to do create systems, you know, where, um, but I still try, I give it a good effort. Yeah. Are you and your husband on the same page with that? Like, or is one of you like, okay, I'm the enforcer and you're like the fun one or, you know, do you guys share your roles pretty well? I think we, I think we do. We do share that. We do share that role, like the enforcer part of it and the fun part of it, you know, um, but I'm unpredictable unto my own self. So that might change where one day I'm the enforcer and the next day I'm like, I don't want to enforce anything. I just want to have fun. And I don't want to make any decisions whatsoever. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love that about you. So you grew up on the West Coast. And so what made you come to the East Coast? Like, was it your husband? Was it the military? military. Like- it was the military. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, what brought you over here? I know it was an act of God to bring me here. Um, you know, cause I didn't know where Delaware was. I was so ignorant. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I didn't need to know. I lived in a fantastic, wonderful, great state on the West coast. Why would I need to know about little states on the East coast? Um, right. you know, so that was a, that was a quite the culture shock to come here. Um, you know, but it was this, you know, living in Delaware has been, it's a great place to raise a family and it's a great place to have a business. Yeah. Oh, it's really good for having a business. People are like, wait, wait, what's, what's going on there. That's why I so know. Much incorporate here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's, that's exactly right. But, um, yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's been an adventure for sure. <laughs> you know, but I just, I say, I'm, I'm unpredictable unto my own self because again, when I, people ask me about what I franchise and I said, 2018, no way, there's no way that's going to happen. Like that franchise, that's that dirty F word. I thought of it so negatively. <laughs> I thought this is the idea in my mind, but now I'm like, Oh yes. I'm super excited about that. What do you think made you change your mind that it wasn't like the, the worst F word in the whole world? Like what, do you, was there like a, a moment where you're like, wait, I, or did someone say something that just made you think of it differently? Um, I think it was when people kept sending messages and websites from customers, do you have another location? Um, or are you going to be opening more locations? And I just thought, okay, well, yeah, I think I'll open a couple more locations, you know, like Maryland and Philly, maybe things that I could manage within a driving distance. Yeah. And that should be, that would be fine. And then as people kept coming from all over and driving hours to our store, they'd go, I love this store. I wish there was one like this near me, or they'd say, I love the store. I wish I could open one like this one day. And it was repeatedly. Wow. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I would be an idiot not to do this because I have proven my, my model and I've tested it and I love to see people win and succeed. Yeah. So why not? I've already created this thing and I would, it would, I felt it would really be off of me not to share it. Yeah. So I can share it and let people win in their own way and have a business that they love and do things that they love and create autonomy for themselves and others and build a team. And I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I can grow this amazing brand. Yeah. Cause you're all about helping people. I mean, really that's from the very beginning. You were like, I just want to help people in whatever area you were in. And, and it's really shifting that to be like, well, this is helping someone. This is helping someone like provide for their family, provide for their community and all the people that are working there. Absolutely. Yeah. And you create a workplace that you love, you know? And so it's trying to figure out how you scale that model. Right. And so, um, and so that is going to be, you know, check back in with me a year. Let's see how it's yeah. going. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> Let's see how it's going then. How's it going? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So it's something I never, I never thought I would do, and I, but I felt, you know, after I really wrestled with it internally and letting go, because I, when I was creating this business, it was something that I created special for me in my community, um, and I didn't have the desire to really share it, you know, and realized I needed to step into that more that abundance mindset to share more um, in the thing that I've created. Yeah. Oh, I love this. And I know we could talk all day and I appreciate that you are in your, your beautiful soon to be opening store with your white, beautiful wall, I know. Uh, but you need to drive home so you can see your family. But is there anything that you haven't shared or any other last like words of advice or anything like that, anything mm-hmm. like that for like moms, business owners, like whatever, is there anything on your heart, um, you know, that we haven't talked about that you just kind of want to leave us with? Um, I think it's important for people to stay in their zone of genius. Right. And so whatever that means to you, sometimes I will have people because I own an herbal apothecary, you know, they might assume that I'm an amazing herbalist. I know a little bit things about herbs, right? I know a couple of things, um, but I am by no means an expert and I'm really okay with that. I've learned that I'm actually a better businesswoman than I'm an herbalist. And that's okay because I can actually hire that fantastic herbalist in the community. And then I can create, the, give them a job and a place to be a part of and a team to be part of. So I think staying in your zone of genius, knowing what you're great at and knowing what you're not great at. Yeah. I, mean, um, I love that. And I love that now you're like, but now I'm, I'm a businesswoman. Like that's how I see myself. Not like, oh, I'm not over here. Like the mixologist anymore, like putting all the herbs and things together. It's like, wait, somebody else can do that. This is my role. Yeah. 100%. I love that shift. Yeah. 
Good for you. Okay. Last question. So I always love to leave it because we, as women do not celebrate ourselves enough. We always like are patting everybody else on the back and being everybody's cheerleader, but sometimes we don't recognize things in ourselves. So I want to know, what do you love about yourself right now, Cindy? Um, I love that I can move forward, right? Courageously, even sometimes when I'm not so sure all the time, I'm just like, you know, when you have those moments of self-doubt, I don't let it paralyze me. I refuse to let it paralyze me when I'm unsure about something. And um, I love that I can move forward and I very decisive. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Cause that's not always easy either. No, it's not. I'm very decisive. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, how can people find you? Cause they're going to want to watch your TikToks probably. <laughs> yeah. So you can definitely, that's where that's right. I'm trying to get away from the TikTok right now. It's kind of the Cindy show a little bit. Right? Okay. I'm going to diversify that. Right. Cause I don't okay. want anything to be about the Cindy show. Um, but you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, all the social medias. You can just Google Euphoric Gerbils, Euphoric Gerbils Apothecary. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for taking the time and having this conversation today. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been an honor. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Okay. All right. Bye.